everybody so in this tutorial I'm gonna be explaining to y'all honestly this is like my favorite way to catch fish and that is gonna be toes in the sand in the surf zone on the beach catching inshore predator game fish trout redfish snook flounder even tarpon down in Florida you guys casting a jig with just your normal like largemouth bass rod lighter action what we call trout rods Kind of like a 3000 series reel and a seven foot rod medium action 15 pound braid just any normal fishing rod casting a jig in the surf a lot of people think when it comes to fishing off the beach or fishing in the surf that they have to use like big chunk bait or a live spot live croaker live bait blue crab things like that bottom rigs big rigs all that stuff but they don't realize that some of the best fishing off of the beach and in the surf is what's actually most accessible and easiest. And that's just casting a jig, which you would normally use in your creeks, uh, fishing on the flats, wade fishing, things like that. Same exact style of fishing on the beach. So you guys, I'm gonna roll this tutorial and hopefully if you guys aren't aware of this style of fishing, hopefully you'll give it a shot. If you're already doing it, this video is definitely gonna help y'all out to catch more fish. Let's roll this tutorial and this video will for sure help y'all to catch more fish off of the beach and hopefully open your eyes to one of the easiest ways to catch fish. Don't have to go to the tackle shop and buy expensive bait. All right, people, so for fishing a jig in the surf, uh, it's actually pretty easy. Um, it's the same exact everything thought retrieve everything as fishing it in your inlets and in your creeks so this right here we just have a quarter ounce jig head there are a few slight modifications that you want and hopefully y'all can hear me with these waves um i'm fishing probably i might go a little bit heavier on the leader line right now i've got 15 so right now i've got 15 pound leader line fluorocarbon it does depend because sometimes when the water's really clear then that can affect things. But typically you can go a little bit heavier on your leader line, but you wanna go, when you're fishing a jig from the surf, actually lighter on your backing, on your braid, your main line. So I typically fish like, I don't know, 20 pound braid in the creeks, in the ocean, I'm actually gonna scale that back to 15 or even 10 pound and sometimes eight pound braid. That way you can get longer casts. The ocean, and the beach is all about covering ground and eliminating water, just like anywhere, like you're fishing in a creek. So the longer the cast you can make, obviously higher percentage chance that you can catch fish. So you wanna obviously cast it out as far as you can, but these fish, a lot of them, what you wanna really keep in mind is like these sloughs right here. So you really wanna keep a close eye on the beach and what it looks like. And sometimes, and also, so it's, you want to keep a close eye on what does the beach look like? What does the topography look like right here? And then also, what are the waves doing? If you look down the beach right here, you can see that the beach kind of goes oh, in stages. Oh, oh Christy okay. just pulled off. So the beach kind of drops down in stages. So you can see the tide line right up here. So that's where high tide is. That's the high tide mark. Then it drops off right here. But you see this? This little drop off right here, this drop off, it stair steps down. So there's about, depending on your beach, there's about three to four different stair steps. And each of those stair steps creates an awesome ambush point for these fish. So all the speckled trout and redfish, they're gonna be running. And so you have current that's moving, you have the waves and everything like that. So it just creates a really awesome environment for the food chain and all of our predator fish so down in florida y'all catch snook and tarpon like right up off the beach up here in the mid-atlantic we catch redfish and trout and flounder right here all of our predator fish but that's what you guys want to look at make sure you guys keep in mind those like the stair steps and then the wave action out here but christy and i we do have 
a tutorial on how to fish a jig from the surf, so you guys check that out. So if you have waves that are consistently breaking over here or over there, and you can actually see it if the water's a little bit more clear, you can see like a brown spot. And that right there is a clear indicator of sand bottom sandbar. So, um, but as you see, this wave is cresting, but it's not breaking. Okay, so now it's starting to break right there. So where the wave breaks, that's where you have the sandbar. That's where that, so right here, it looks like we have a slough right here and then a sandbar about 30 yards out in front of us. So these fish are gonna be using these drop-offs, the sloughs, and even the sandbars, just like they would when you're fishing in the creeks. So the fish highways are gonna be these sloughs and then what you wanna look for is areas where say you have like a deep slough and then you have a sandbar right over there or you have a sandbar right here. So right now, Christy and I are fishing. There's a sandbar right where Christy's fishing right there and then I'm working this little slough right there. But you can, so when you're fishing a jig, I'm gonna run over here. So right here, we have a sandbar right there. And as you can see, we've got a little deeper spot right in this area. So what I like to do when I'm fishing a jig off of the beach is work. Sometimes I'll fish up on the sandbar. A lot of times your predator fish, hold on, big wave. A lot of times your predator fish are gonna be right here, right next to the sandbar. So the way that you work a jig is really the same way you work it in your creeks. So you can bounce it on the bottom, just like this. This way you can catch flounder, reds, trout, snook, anything like that you can bounce it you can also slow roll it through the surf as well so you can just hit a slow roll just like this so it's really important your weight of your jig head when you're fishing in the surf um we don't like to a quarter ounce honestly is kind of the main uh size the jig head that i'm using in the surf i don't really like to go any heavier than that sometimes i will uh, i'll go up to a 3 8 ounce um, if i'm say striper fishing uh, off of like in new jersey or if i was striper fishing in new jersey um, and i don't know then that's where i would sometimes scale up to maybe that 3 8 or even a half ounce jig head but typically a quarter ounce jig head is going to get it done you want it to be able to carry the cast out but also um, you want to have the appropriate action in the surf. A lot of my friends actually fish a 1 8 ounce jig head. A 1 8 ounce in the surf. Y'all, so there's tons of bait right here. And honestly, this is what these fish are doing is they're using the drop-offs, they're using the waves and the surf to corral their bait. I typically like to work an area for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so. Some people like to work it longer. I give it about 10 to 15 minutes. If I'm not catching anything, then I'm gonna relocate down to the next, then I'll relocate down to the next sandbar. Oh, I just got whacked. It's really important when you're fishing a jig off of the beach to know what's running. That way you can better kind of match like what the fish are hitting and ensure that, and just know that you're not wasting your time. Like I'm not fishing a jig off the surf in the mid-Atlantic in say, I don't know, like January or something like that. Um, there could be fish here, but you know, you definitely wanna check the reports and you know, certain times of the year, you know, you're gonna have more of a migration of our fish. That could be like, oh, there we go. I just got whacked. Uh, so that could be like in the spring and fall and throughout the summer, our prime time fishing a jig in the surf is when the water temp, in my opinion, is anywhere between, I would say like, as long as the water temp is over and above like 50 or so degrees. But sometimes these trout and redfish will actually push out of the inlets and into the ocean on really cold days in the dead of winter because the ocean does not freeze, at least in the mid-Atlantic. So, um, Sometimes you will get fish in the winter time off of the beach, but you do wanna, I would say, I would definitely recommend checking this uh, reports for kind of like what's running. Cause you know, if there's say tarpon are running the beach or, you know, larger big drum or big striper or things like that, there's a fish. Oh my gosh, keep losing these fish talking to you guys. But anyway, so that's where you definitely wanna check the reports to see what's running. 
and there are different times of the year in different regions where you just have like really good beach fishing and that's when you really want to get out there and fish a jig. Christy's hooked up. 